Now, um, we're going to be talking about grooming, like Pastor said. And um, I think it is um, important for us to understand, you know, why a topic like this is featuring in a program where we're talking about reigning in life. Okay? Now, sometimes when we raise topics like this, you know, there is that tendency for us to want to see it as, oh, I need to look good because I want to impress uh, maybe a girl or a sister that, you know, I'm setting my eyes on. Even though most of us men, we don't do it well, all right? If we ask the ladies here to start to talk about how we dress, I'm sure we're not going to leave this place today. But thankfully, they are not the one to address this matter. So <laughs> I believe we are safe. All right, but it is important for us because if we begin to ask us now, why is it important to talk about grooming? Can anybody just give us an answer? Why is it important to talk about grooming? Because people will address you the way you dress. Okay. The way you dress, that's the way people will address you. Okay, thank you. Because the first perception of you is the way you dress. Okay, thank you. Great. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Yeah, grooming is very important because God is a clean God and God is pure. And um, I remember in the Old Testament when God said that he wants to see the children of God. He told them to tidy up everywhere clean and make sure they are clean so that he could be able to present himself to them. So that's why to be clean, cleanliness is next to godliness. Because without you being clean, the Holy Spirit that is clean can't be in you. So that dirty spirit of the Satan is the one that people will be seeing. So it will Thank be you. pleasant. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Right? So our body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. And again, wherever it is that the Holy Spirit is going to stay, it has to be clean. I think that's what he's trying to say. So you see, all the things that we've said, they are all right. Okay? But I want us to look at it from the point of what we have been talking about in this retreat. So, and I would like us to look at our Bible, Revelation 1, 5 and 6. You know, just to look at it from what pastor has been teaching all this while. So, Revelation 1, 5 and 6 says, I'm from Jesus Christ who is a faithful witness and the first begotten of the dead and the prince of the kings of the earth, unto him that loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood. I'm sure we're already familiar with this because pastor dealt with this uh, yesterday. Now, number six says, and had made us kings and priests unto God and his father, to him be glory and dominion forever and ever. You see, one of the things that is dying for our sins has done is to have made us kings and priests. Now, how many of us will see a king? I will not recognize one. Nobody. Because when you see a king, you will know that this is a king by the way they are dressed. Or how many of us will see a priest and will not recognize one? You know, because when you see them, you will know. In fact, there is a saying from the area where I come from, uh, where they say, ah, Kenri Omoba, Kamari Dansaki. In other words, when you see a prince, right, you will definitely see royalty. And because of that, you will be able to attribute to the fact that this is a prince. Now, how many of us, by the way we dress, by the way we appear, when people see us, can say that truly, we are kings and priests unto our God. That's the question. You know, Pastor talks about wearing torn clothes and all that. Have you checked the Bible? Right? Anytime you see people wearing torn clothes in the Bible, you see that because they have sinned against God and they tore their clothes because they were money. So for those who wear torn clothes, is it because you have money or you think it's fashion? <clears throat> Let's begin to think, oh, see what he has made us because of our sins that he has taken away. K 
kings and priests. And we all agree that when you see a king, you will know. When you see a priest, you will know. If we come into this place and you have maybe four people seated here, right? And they say, go and sit beside somebody. Let's say here you see somebody wearing torn jeans. The hair is looking shaka shaka. You see another person, maybe like Pastor John, right? Then you come to this place, you see this brother, you know, the way he's seated. And then you go to this place, you see another, you know, somebody, the cloth is dirty. Where would you sit? You know, these four areas. Where would you sit? You have one place to, to where will you go first? Eh? Sorry? The place that's clean. So you will either sit here where Pastor John is or where my brother is. You won't go to that place where somebody is because you'll be looking, is this person okay? All right? Now, that's how sometimes we look when we think we are doing fashion. You know, because what we are doing is we are sending people away from us. But one thing I want us to know is God is very particular about the way we appear. It's something that is important to him because if it's not important to him, he won't go the extra length in Exodus 28 when he was talking to Moses and gave a description of what his priest must wear to come before him. Exodus 28. Let's read from verse 1. Okay, it says, And take thou unto thee Aaron thy brother and his sons with him from among the children of Israel, that he may minister unto me in the priest's office. You remember that we have made king and priest, right? It says, Even Aaron, Nadab and Abihu, Eleazar and Itamar, Aaron's sons. It says, And thou shalt make holy garments for Aaron thy brother, for glory and for beauty. Verse 3. And thou shalt speak unto all that are wise hearted, whom I have filled with the spirit of wisdom, that they make Aaron's garments to consecrate him, that he may minister unto me in the priest's office. You see, when you know, we're not going to, you know, because when you go from verse 4 downwards, you will see God giving a description of the garment that they will wear to operate in the priestly office. You know, Pastor often said this, I even said it here today, the way some of us come to church, that sometimes it is Sunday that we think God is in church. So when we come to church during the week, because we don't understand that we are kings and priests, and our God is even more interested in how we look, we dress anyhow. The question is, do you look truly like a king? Do you look like a priest in how you dress? either as a man or as a woman. You know, when, when you look at the Old Testament, for example, if you are going to mention names of men that are after God's heart, what names would you mention? Who again? Who? Okay, let's even talk about David. You remember David, right? When he committed sin, you know, and um, the priest had come to him to tell him about what he has done. What did he do? He mourned for a period of time, but eventually the child died. What did he do afterwards? The Bible says he got up, he washed himself, he anointed himself, right? As in perfume. He used new clothes, and what did he do? He went to the house of God, of God to go and do what? To go and worship God. Why do you think somebody was going to the house of God? He went to wash himself. He anointed himself, as in he used perfume. He wore new clothes and go there to go and worship God. You remember the story of Joseph, who is another man, you know, that really reflected the glory of God in the Old Testament. When they said to him that Pharaoh is calling him, what did he do? Because he understand the importance of appearing well. Okay, so that is the perspective where I want us to see because when we talk, uh, the way you look is the way you are dressed. Yes, we know all that. 
But beyond that, because of who we are and because of the purpose of this program, there is a need for us to be able to tie this, what we are doing, when we are talking about grooming, to who we are as priests and king, to what he has done for us, so that we will know, all right, that personal grooming, it's, it's, it's a business that is very, very important to God. Okay? So, although I had a slide, I think we're just going to move away from that because most of what is there, you know, is speaking meant, uh, more to men. But let me just flow as it is, right? Now, let's start looking at ourselves from the end. Okay? I know that there are so many things, fashion and all that, you can begin to debate, uh, is a man supposed to plate his hair or whatever? But one of the things that I do, all right, is when I look at the Bible, I look at the life of people that followed God, right? I look at what they say or what is written about them in the way, for example, talking about women, in the way that they appear. One of the people that, you know, I respect so much in the Bible is Apostle Paul. Right, so when you look at his life, and you can't really see anything about maybe he plated his hair or he spoke about it and all that, you see such kind of thing. Eh? I like to leave it and do what is appropriate. So we can begin to stand there and argue, but what I know, right, based on what I've seen and what I know is that it is not the duty of a man, it's not in the place of a man to be plating hair, all right, and I don't think you can stand before God as a king or priest and appear like that before him. Okay? So let's start from that point. Okay? It is also important you make sure that at least frequently you trim it. The hair will always grow. All right? Right? The hair will always grow. So when you cut your hair, you know that after a while it will grow. You trim frequently so that it looks neat. And again, if you want to keep low cut, you do the same thing because the hair will always grow. And for our women that are here, you know sometimes when you plait your hair and you do whatever it is, apart from the wig, you know sometimes the hair also will grow. And, and I think that's what you call undergrowth. Okay? So sometimes it can look offensive. So you might also want to be conscious of that and take care of it. I hope I'm safe with the women. <laughs> Maybe I should just focus on the men so that... <laughs> All right? You know, but this is what we're talking about. Then again, if you are a man and you are going to keep your mustache, right, keep it trim at all times, especially when you want to grow it, okay? Make sure it is neat and it is well shaven at all times. And if you are going to keep it low too, it shouldn't be such that it's, you know, growing everywhere and it's not, it's not neat. All right? Just know that God is not going to be pleased to see you as that because you are a priest, right? And you are a king, okay? Now, let's talk about the mouth. Let's know this thing, right? The mouth will always smell. Hmm? But many times we compound the problem, you know, because we use this mouth to eat a lot of things and all that. Some of them are left in the mouth, all right? And if we don't take care of them properly, they will start to smell. And when we talk to people, it will come out. And you know what people will do? They move away, all right? So imagine you want to preach Christ to someone. The person is not going to hear your message. He's going to be looking for how to dodge whatever it is that is coming from the mouth. And that's why it is important for us to take care of our mouth. Some of us, we finish eating oily food and all that. We don't even drink water or use water to raise the mouth. We start carrying the mouth around. What do you think will happen? It will smell. And people will start keeping away from you. Have you eaten meat before and it got stuck? So maybe after some minutes and you now remove it, try and smell it and, and see how it's smelling. If you were smelling that way before you ate it, you wouldn't have eaten it. That is the type of smell that is coming out of your mouth when you don't take care of it. Why do we sleep overnight? And by the time we wake up, 
Our, our mouth is not smelling nice. Why? Because the bacteria, the enzyme in the mouth will have worked overnight and broken down whatever thing that is there. Right? And so you leave that same mouth. You stand up and you are talking to people. Uh -uh, upper. It will be offensive. And that's why you need to take care of the mouth properly. And it is not just in the money alone that we take care of our mouth. We need to be conscious of the fact that so many things are going on in the mouth. If you are fasting, for example, right, you have not eaten, you have not taken anything, there is a high tendency that after a while your mouth will start smelling. If you don't talk for a long time, right, there is a high tendency that your mouth will start smelling. Not because you did not wash the mouth. But because of so many things that is going on in the mouth at that particular point in time, and it will produce smell. So we need to be conscious of that. Do you want to check if your mouth is smelling now? Try and breathe into your elbow. Huh? <laughs> and let the smell come back. Oh, yeah, confirm. <laughs> Don't worry. Because you are doing it on your clothes, there is a possibility that the smell from the cloth will cover it. But seriously, brethren, we need to be conscious of the fact that our mouth will smell and we need to take care of it. Now, so how do you take care of the mouth? It is recommended that you wash your mouth two times, right? In a day, morning and evening. Some of us may not do that, all right? Maybe because we don't want to finish our toothpaste quickly or for whatever reason. But even if you are brushing your mouth once in a day, right? Do it properly. Use the appropriate toothpaste. It is not everything that is packaged as toothpaste that is good for the mouth. All right? Most toothpaste that are recommended, you know, that keep uh, your breath fresh. Most times, you know, you look at the content of the fluoride that is there and whether it has mint. All right? Those things are very important when you choose your toothpaste. So it is not every toothpaste. All you just buy because you want to brush your teeth and you do now, one of the things that I also need to do, because most times what we say is brush your teeth, brush your teeth. But beyond the teeth, you see this tongue, right? That is where the bulk of the smell is coming. And many of us, you just do shuku shuku, brush your teeth up and down, up and down, up and down. And it is done. You don't wash your tongue. That tongue is very, very critical when you are cleaning your mouth. You have to brush it and feel your breath after you have brushed that tongue to know that, okay, everything is fine. You know, then all the corners of the teeth here and there, up and down, the inside the teeth and everywhere, you brush properly, you rinse well, you know, and you know you're fine. All right? You can, there are so many things now that people have, there is a, a small... Uh, mouth spray that you can even put in your pocket. So after you've gone a long day, maybe you've eaten, you've done all that, you use water to rinse your mouth, you can just spray into it so that you keep your mouth fresh. Sometimes, you know, people uh, chew gums, mints. It is because they want to keep, you know, their breath, they want to keep it fresh. So I want to encourage us to preach, I mean, rather, to pay attention to our mouth. Okay, very, very important. Very, very important. All right, it repels people when the mouth smells. And you know what? Many times we don't know that our mouth is smelly. So you need to check, right? I mean, aside checking, just make sure that you keep it fresh every time. And people will not tell you when your mouth is smelly because they don't want to offend you. So it is our duty to pay attention to that and make sure that, you know, we keep our mouth, you know, safe at all times. Now, let's go lower. Now, if you're looking at this area, one of the places that you also want to pay attention to is your armpit, right? Um, it is not kingdom's investment when you keep here under your armpit. Honestly. And you know what? Some of us men we will not go and wear short sleeve. You stand like this, you will be seeing stands of here shooting out. That's horrible. 
Because that here that you have on that, okay, let's start with this. You see, in this part of the world where we are, right, because of our climate, we will always sweat. Whether we know it or not. The weather is cool now, right? Now, if you had come into this place before they put on the AC, you would have felt the heat. Okay? So, because of that, our body system, right, will always generate that waste, those things that come out as sweat. So, when you have those long hairs on that hair, what you are doing is you are trapping the odor that is coming out from your handpits into the hair, right? And you also keep that odor for longer. So it will smell. And that's why you need to shave it off, number one. Now, when you shave it off, it is not enough to also leave it as it is. Why? Because you will always sweat. Right? And when you sweat, because these are waste products that are coming out of the body, it will smell. Okay? So that's why it is recommended that you use either a deodorant or antiperspirant. Okay? Now, if you use a deodorant, like this is a common rule that many of us know, when you use it, all right, it will help suppress the odor that the sweat coming out of you is supposed to produce. That's what it does. But in the case of antiperspirant, it will prevent you from sweating. Okay? So you want to choose which of these two is comfortable for you. All right? But these are not things that are expensive that we can say, you know, we can't afford. And to be honest, Many of our men don't pay attention to this. And because of that, we produce offensive smell. And that's why sometimes when you come into an auditorium like this, maybe we are offering praise to God, and because we're generating more heat, right? The smell of the atmosphere, it will change. And then you will see the ushers spraying air freshener. We are the one causing it. If we all take care of our armpit, there may not be need for that. All right? So, imagine the effect of that. When you are sitting next to someone that has come to meet God, and what is oozing out of your body is making the person to lose concentration on what is coming from the altar. So, you are not acting as a king and a priest. Right? How many of us understand what I'm saying? Okay, so we're going to change from today, right? Uh -huh. Please, let's bear that in mind. So let's save, you know, the larger community. Our looking good, our taking care of ourselves, it's not just for us, it's also for, you know, because when you smell, it is not just you. All right? It is more of the people around you, you know, that uh, we feel that. So you'll be doing a lot of community service if we take care of ourselves. All right? You know, so again, when we look at the body generally, all right? Now, um, I know we all take our bath and all that, but it is important that you take that with soap and sponge. It is not just to take water and pour it on your head, do blah, 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 and you say you have taken your bath. That is not it. Why? Because, just like I said, because of the type of weather we have around there, you know, your body is always producing sweat. And when those things come out, right, they dry up on your skin. Okay? And it is even in your own interest because if you are like that for a long period of time, you don't take good care of yourself or you just pour water on yourself and you do what? Apart from the fact that you are exposing your skin to um, potential skin diseases, right? You are also covering up your sweat glands such that your body now will begin to, you know, harbor inside what is supposed to 
take out as waste. All right? So it is in our own interest that we take care of our body. Okay? Can we go lower to the men? So as much as we talk about the hair under the armpit, you know, under your groin area too, you are not supposed to keep hair there. Why? Because it's one of those places that we sweat. So you need to shave them off. We understand what I'm saying, right? Uh -huh. We need to shave them off. Then again, let's also remember that nobody is interested in seeing your boxer short. So when you put it on, there is no need to pull down your trousers because we're not impressed by the color of your boxer short or whether it is a designer boxer short. We're not impressed by that. So you know what? Always make sure that you pull up your trouser. Okay? And um, many times, of course, you can't be in Oak House Church and you're being coming and you are sagging your trouser. Right? But like Pastor will always say, you can come that way, but make sure you don't remain that way. Okay? You know, so talking about this other part, maybe we should go into dressing. Okay? Simple things that we need to know about our dressing. Right? Uh, sorry, brother. Can you please step forward? Thank you. Please come. <laughs> you can face the... I'm sure we like the way he's dressed, right? Okay. So let's begin from... What's going on there? How many buttons is your suit? Two. Okay, fine. Okay, so let's start with the suit, right? If you're wearing a suit, you know, because any of us can be anywhere and we have to wear a suit. So if it's a uh, two-button suit, right? When you are standing, the upper one must remain um, buttoned, but the lower one, you lose it, okay? And when you sit, you unbutton your jacket, right? But if you are using a three-button uh, suit, so it's the middle button that you make sure that is buttoned up anytime you are standing, the upper one is optional, but the lower one must always be unbuttoned, all right? Now, in the combination of shirt and suit, so our brother is wearing a plain suit, right, and a plain shirt, right? It goes on perfectly well, right? But when you put on a patterned suit and you now go and put on maybe a striped shirt or a checkers, it is wrong. It is, you are going against the law of personal grooming. It's too busy. You now compound the old matter. You now go and use pattern tie. <laughs> you, know, you know what you have at that particular point in time? A corporate masquerade. Okay, so these are some of the things that we may not have paid attention to. Maybe we have not been told and all that, but they are really, really important. And if we understand that we are priests, we are kings, then we should be able to dress as such. Okay, so when you wear, if you wear a pattern shirt, right, it goes well with a plain suit, right? And if you are going to use a tie, you use a plain tie. All right, so you will be excused, you know, doing that. Now, talking about your trouser, or rather, your belt, right? Your belt and the color of your shoe must be the same. Somebody is checking my belt, somebody. <laughs> All right, so where your dress, the color of your belt and your shoe must be the same. All right? So let's uh, pay attention to that. Sorry, my brother, you can go. Thank you very much. Okay.
Okay. So again, you know, different occasions, right, would warrant different types of dressing. Hmm? So you also need to be conscious of the occasion and know, you know, what type of dressing that you're going to wear. It's a different thing if we're, maybe we're just doing something casual in, in church. We come, maybe we want to have a quick meeting, or we've come, we want to come and do some work and all that, and you wear, you know, shorts, right? It's acceptable. But you have come, hmm? especially, maybe you are now going to now serve communion, right? And you're wearing short. What do you think of a king? that he is doing the work of a king and is just so careless about the dressing. I think that is offensive to God. All right? So we need to be conscious that when we are coming, just like God was telling Moses about Aaron and his sons, that will serve as priest before him. He gives specifics as to what they can wear to come before him. And so when we are coming to church, not just on Sundays, we need to dress, not because we want to impress somebody, but because we know that we are priests and we are kings and we are dressing to reflect the glory of our God. So I'll leave you to decide what is pleasing to God in this case, what is glorious, all right? But I know something. If the Bible will speak before Jesus Christ came that they will cast lots about his dress. And when, you know, it was taken to, and they did the same, the same soldiers that beat him up and all that, and they were casting lot for his garment. I don't think it's because it's a designer dress. I don't think because it is, it carries power, mantle. Because if they had recognized that, they wouldn't in the first place have done all the things that they've done. But I want to believe it's because of the cleanliness of what Jesus Christ was putting on and how neat and quality it is. And if we can just imbibe the same practice, we're not dressing to impress anybody. Okay? You are dressing to reflect whom you are that king and priest, that Jesus Christ died to take away his sins so that we can get into that position. So you are not dressing to impress anybody, but let's know it first that when we say we dress, right, we are dressing to impress God. Well, not to impress God, but to reflect his glory. You will see what David did. He was coming before the Lord. He went to wash himself. He applied perfume. Then he changed his clothes. The same thing when Joseph was going to stand before a man. Right? He shaved off his bed, you know, wore good clothes, and he went to appear. I think it's because these people understand the importance, right, of looking neat. Because they understand the importance of representing their God. So either in the presence of man or coming before the Lord, you know, they made sure that they did it very well. Okay? So I just want us to bear all these things in mind. There's a lot to talk about, but I just want us, number one, to understand the reason why it is important for us to dress well. And number two, to know, okay, it is not, you're not impressing anybody. You are reflecting the glory of your father. And for us to pay attention to some of the things that, you know, we need to do. How many people here would dress the same way we come to church, to our places of work? Where we are standing before men, mere men, and when we are standing before God, our maker, the one that has made us kings and priests, let's look at it. If we don't think it is important for us to take care of ourselves, all right, while in the presence of God and even in the presence of men, then it means that we are yet to also see the light of whom we are as sons of God. 
One of the things that I find very strange is when I see men with long nails. I really don't know what they are doing with it, especially when it's now dirty. I mean, we understand women, you know, for fashion and all that, even though many times, you know, it's a struggle, right? When you fix all those nails, I mean, let's say the truth, women, sometimes somebody wants to pick uh, bread, communion, you know, is a struggle because the nails are too long, you know, <laughs> they won't be able to, they will not be looking for a way to push it to the corner. You're working on your system, you're typing, it's difficult, but maybe for women because of fashion, but what about men? What is the point of keeping long nails? Are we... Is it for fashion or whatever it is? I, I don't understand. So if you're a man, and please, let's know it is important for us to keep our nails. We cut it. We keep it well-groomed. Make sure that it's not dirty. It's not, there are no dirt that are hiding under um, the nails, okay, at all times. But I want to believe we understand now the importance. It is not just, it is the way we look that we are dressed to. It is not because you want to impress that sister. You know, so that when you go and tell her that God said the Lord, she will first look at you and all that. But more importantly, as priests, as kings, it is to the glory of our God that we take good care of ourselves. And it will also enhance the work of ministry that we do.